listen the only thing that can cause God to change his mind sometimes God can even himself now let's take away the devil when God becomes upset with you and God becomes angry with you and God wants to destroy you and finish you the only thing that can cause God to change his mind is sacrifice yeah I know somebody is confused prophet Daniel are you sure I'll come to show you God can tell you that he wants to kill you but what God sees and he changes his mind is sacrifice on an altar one day there was a man by the name of David say David David he woke up one day and another time God has blessed David so big everything is moving for him he said right now when he chests around himself he has made good money he has got a lot of people around him so he told his men count the people for me the moment he started counting God said David I'm upset with you you are counting the men to prove to yourself that you are big now I'm about to finish you so David is now in the bad books of God and God wants to finish David God wants to destroy everything because what you are putting your minds on God says I gave it to you why do you want to count it today I came to speak to somebody Jesus. when God begins to bless you don't put your hope and trust on the things God has given to you still put your hope and trust on the living God Jesus. so God is angry and he speaks to one prophet by the name of God someone say God God and he told God God go and tell David I'm angry with him and I'm about to bring three kinds of disaster on him tell him to choose one tell somebody which one will you choose which one will you choose oh one more time let's go which one will you choose he said disaster is about to come but all the disaster tell him to choose one because no matter what I will never change my mind I will finish the guy I pray that in Jesus name Jesus may we not make any mistake for God to be angry with us Amen. so it came it came about it came about and David told the prophet tell me what the punishment is then there's the punishment let's go to 2nd Samuel 24 go and tell David this is what the Lord says I'm giving you three options choose one of them for me to carry it against you so disaster is coming to David and God said to him three options choose one of them but for Daniel what were the options so the first issue is that three years no food no water three months your enemies will chase after you and for three days an angel with a sword will come into the city it will kill everybody so choose one of them if it, how many people want there three years with no food okay three months when he's chasing after you and three days um angel killing people so so you you like the one you like the second one but let me tell you something David looked in front of the face of the prophet and said prophet three years no food no water I will not survive the one my enemies is chasing after me I don't like it and David said he wants the one that people are dying and look at the answer David gave David said when my enemies are chasing after me it's very dangerous but I will let the one God himself is killing him. I can go to him and he can forgive me. That's right. Oh, you don't get the picture over here. He says, he says, don't let me fall into the hands of my enemies. But David knows that when you fall in the hands of your enemies, enemies are so cruel and wicked. So let me just fall in the hands of God. Because in all, David knew a secret. That if I find the hands of God, an altar will one day will speak for me. Amen. I don't know about you, but there's an altar of God Jesus. that will speak on your behalf. Jesus. So David chose that one. Then early in the morning, an angel with sword showed up in the city, killing spree, killing people, killing people. 
even look at the thing and say, oh my God, people are dying. What will I do? But listen to me, there is a God. Listen, life is about checking the principles of God. Getting the revelations about God and something that will happen. When the angel started killing, an angel of the Lord appeared and said to the prophet to go and tell David, David, people are dying, but I want to give you a secret about God because the angel has been staying with God. So the angel knows the secret about God. He said, David, don't worry at all. Run and go and build an altar in a particular place. Sacrifice on there. And the angel was... Oh, I can feel somebody. So let's go right now. So let, let, let's check it from Chronicles. First Chronicles 21 verse 16. And let's see it from there. And let's see what happened. Church of God, hear me? David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth with a drawn sword in his hand, a standard over Jerusalem. Then all the elders were clothed in sackcloth and they fell face down because people were dying like water. And let's see what happened. David said to God, was it not I who ordered the fountain men to fight or to be counted? I'm the one who has sinned and have done wrong. Why are you killing these other people? So it means somebody's issue can cause you to be in trouble. Jesus. Ah, today I came to break any shadow of satanic ripple effects. Amen. Listen, it's called satanic ripple effects. Amen. You didn't do anything at all. It was David who did it. But now it is other people that are dying. Jesus. Today, any ripple effect. Jesus. What happened from your father's background Jesus. before you were born and now you become an, a victim. Let the altar of Jehovah come true for your destiny. Amen. No, so listen. So, so he says, why? What have they done? Oh God, let your hand if you fall upon me and my family. And do let not let this disaster or plague remain on your people. And let's see verse 18. The power of the altar. Then the angel of the Lord or that God, God is a prophet, to tell David to go up and build an Listen, the angel is carrying a sword, killing people. But the angel says, what can stop me from killing? I want to see an altar. Which altar is behind you? Jesus. Listen, in the satanic angel Jesus. that holds a sword in your hand to come around your family. Jesus. May a new altar be lifted up before God. Amen. And may it be broken down by the power of God. Amen. Say Jesus. Jesus. Now, the angel also directed the exact place where the altar will be built. He said, at the treasure floor of a man by the name of Aruna. Treasure floor is, you know, where they trash wheat. When they have the wheat, that has the other part of the grains that you want to get the finest part. When you get the finest part, where they go through all the threshing to get the best part of the wheat. That's it. Hear me? It was a man's farm, but the angel says, that's where I want. Every sacrifice has to cost you. Because it's the man's farm, but the angel said, for you to build a sacrifice, get me a place that belongs to somebody. Listen, to win your battles, something has to cost you. Jeez. Ask the person by you, what is costing you? What is costing you to win your battle? To, to win, win your battle. battle. Now, now let's go, let's continue there. I have just six minutes to go. So David went up in obedience. too much. So he went up in obedience to the word to the word of the Lord that God has spoken. And let's, whilst Aruna was stressing his feet, he turned and saw the angel. His four sons were with him hid themselves. Then David approached. When Aruna looked and saw, he left the floor and bowed down and said, Hey, today the king has come to my farm. Lift up your right hand. So the man is busy working in his farm. And the king has entered. And the man said, Why has the king entered? He doesn't know that the king is coming to say that from today I need your farm. But let's see the secret of the needing. Let's go. David said to him, let me have the sight of your dressing floor so that I can build an altar to the Lord that the plague on the people may be stopped. 
sell it to me at a full price. Listen, David was a king. He could have got the land by himself for free. He says, let me buy. You want something? You want something to do for God? What is costing you? Nothing happens for free. David said to him, at a full price. And let's what the man said. The man said, no, I'll give it for free. Aruna said to David, take it. Leave it, my Lord, the king. Do whatever that pleases you. Lord, look. I, I will give even the oxen for the burnt sacred offerings. The dresses ledges for the wood. And the wheat for the grain offering, I will give all this. Let's see what David said. But David replied to Aruna, no, I insist on paying the full price. If I want to do a sacrifice on your farm, I've got to buy your farm. It shouldn't be for free. I will not take, I will not take for the Lord what is yours or a sacrifice of burnt offering that costs me nothing. Ask the person what is costing you on your battle. What is costing you on your battle? Say to win your battle. To win your battle. Something has to cost you. Something has to cost you. Say to win your battle. To win your battle. Something has to cost you. Something has to cost you. And let's see what happened. Let's see what happened. So David paid Aruna 600 shekels of gold for the site. Present day, it, it weighs more than 1,000 kilos. Paid it for the site. Gave money for the site. And after giving the money for the site, let's see what happened. David built an altar to the Lord there. And sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. He called on the Lord. And the Lord answered him with fire from heaven on the altar of burnt offering. And what happened? Then the Lord spoke to the angel. And he put his sword back into Jesus. Don't clap yet. So right now, the angel, let's say, this, this is the third disaster. This is the third disaster. The angel with the sword killing people. So when the angel was killing, when the angel got to a place where David had built an altar and saw a sacrifice, God said to the angel, take away your sword. Come on. The angel said, the, the Lord said to the angel, take away your sword. Don't touch anybody again. Because I have seen an altar with a sacrifice. So I, I told you from the beginning, I just made a rhetorical statement that many people were confused that God, when he speaks, he doesn't change his mind. But the only thing that can cause him to change his mind when he sees an altar. Because God himself told the prophet, let the guys choose one of the three disasters. Three years of no food, three months of enemies chasing, and three days of enemies, um, the angel killing. God will never change his mind. But there was this, a, a, a solution. If God himself can see an altar and change his mind, Jesus. how much more the altar you are built that a disaster from your family is coming around you Jesus. it will never come around you Amen. today in a crisis or calamity Jesus. looking for your life Jesus. But the first question i'll ask over here is that have you built something for god every day you declare let the god of the testimony city i need a miracle god of the testimony city. the issue is the issue is the issue the issue is what is speaking from that altar for you altar with no sacrifice is only a platform it's a concrete platform can i tell something can i say something to you yes. isaac isaac is about to be killed by abraham but the moment they got to the place where the altar was god said to abraham stop it every day we say that abraham was so obedient to god no when God saw that there was an altar, the boy shouldn't have been killed. He said, no, I extend his life for the life of the sheep. When there's an altar, if any disaster was coming around you, it will block it for something better to come around Jesus. your life. Today I declare over your life. Jesus. I speak over your tomorrow. Jesus. I speak over the days ahead of you. Jesus. If there was any shame or disaster waiting for your life, Jesus. let the altar of Jehovah speak.
speak on your behalf. Amen. Amen. Son, I receive it. I receive it. Son, it one more time. I receive it. 